Uh, well, everybody, uh, thanks for joining me here today. This is just a special little thing that, uh, that Jeff and Sander kind of uh, have been uh, talking to me a little bit about uh, joining in with the DDC crew. I, I have a tremendous amount of, of respect for uh, what DDC is aiming to do and, in fact, what they are doing here today. So it's just a little bit of contribution here that I wanted to throw out there um, that is just a little bit of guidance from clinician that pretends to be a technician uh, and the real technicians here in the audience. And um, uh, part of sometimes what I see is a little bit of the disconnect between how we're going from a uh, digital kind of hybrid denture type workflow uh, to making sure that it gets set up for our technicians. And it's interesting, you know, this is a, a technique and, and an approach I've been using now for years, and I still get a lot of questions about it and be like, oh, how do I take my reline scans and, and how do I get them ready for ExoCAD and, and 3Shape or, or dental wings if you're using dental wings. I don't have dental wings in my software uh, uh, repertoire, but I do have a ExoCAD a 3Shape in my office in my laboratory. Um, but uh, today's uh, presentation is going to be aiming specifically on how I as a clinician can help out our, our real technicians. Uh, to go ahead and, um, you know, so that way we can collaborate and, and make ourselves work a whole lot better together. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go through a couple of slides here really quick that I'm going to get in some software stuff, just because I got to set up this idea of what we're doing. Uh, there's a little bit of information background about me. Santa already went through some amazing uh, stuff here as well, so I'll just go ahead and skip that. Uh, make sure you check out uh, also my group, uh, you know, on FastTrackDentalC.com. Uh, just a shameless little plug there for our online courses. Um, just a quick disclosure, I am not an expert with ExoCAD, 3Shape, or MeshMix, or whatever. I mean, anybody who considers themselves you know, solely an expert, um, they're, they're really missing out. Um, however, I, I do consider myself an enthusiast uh, for ExoCAD, 3Shape, MeshMixer, and just digital dentistry in general. You know, but it's really all about how I'm going to improve kind of my patient situation. I'm looking at trying to look at real everyday clinical situations and being able to figure them out in creative ways. You know, and many times I got a lot of flack too, you know, several years ago, you know, my friends were like, oh, you, you know, if I can't do it all 100% digital, then I don't want to do it. Okay, I get it. You know, I get that philosophy of I want to do everything digital. And anybody who says that they're a 100% digital dentist or digital technician is, in my opinion, not being really forthcoming. Um, why? Because for in all intents and purposes, you, you, you cannot be 100% digital. We still have these things, our hands, that we have to create things with. And then on top of that, you know, even though uh, what it comes down to is, is, is that we want to do more things digital, the reality is, is, is that we have to have a clinical need to be able to address that. And really how I got started with ExoCAD and 3Shape was playing with these hacker softwares, uh, Mesh Mixer, Mesh Lab, SketchUp, NetFad Blender, oh man, some other ones too that I just, you know, I just lost some brain cells even thinking about. Um, but the reality is, is that I just kept coming back to Mesh Mixer because Mesh Mixer was, there's not a lot of people using it at the time. In fact, very few. And the reality is, is that it was kind of uncharted territory. But what I recognized very early on is, is that if you can just use this software up here, your, your mental software, to be able to go ahead and at least say, what can this software do for me as a dentist, as a dentist that sometimes plays technician on TV as well? But the reality is, is, is that you can do some incredible dental things with Mesh Mixer. And there are some incredible limitations also with Mesh Mixer. Oh, pardon me, that sounded like a Donald Trump thing or something like that. Anyway, sorry, random political uh, laugh. Uh, Mesh Mixer. Uh, what happens is, is, is that Mesh Mixer is an incredible software, but it does have limitations. And what happens is, is, is that I noticed the, the main limitation for me, especially early on, was is that it was completely horrendous for making occlusal guards. So I jumped into ExoCAD. I just bought ExoCAD, and I said, let me just buy this thing only for making occlusal guards and it kind of pays off for that but then when you purchase it for one thing you kind of go on to the next thing and then you start saying well I can kind of start pushing the envelope a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and occlusal guards has really been kind of just a, a go-to for me not to get 
off on a tangent for a second, but it's really all about making sure that we step wise into what we're going to go with as well. And really, my typical week pre-COVID uh, was just like what you see here. You know, designing single tooth restorations. Um, you know, milling and designing full arch temporaries. I am not an aesthetic person. I rely upon my high quality technicians. Where if I'm going to do some basic tasks like a single crown, no big deal. I think any dentist, any dental technician could probably even prep a, a tooth crown, but any dentist can do a tooth crown, a single tooth. When you go into full arch or dentures, we got to really uh, rely upon our quality technicians as well. So I'm a firm believer, even though sometimes some technicians think otherwise, I'm a firm believer in the health and prosperity of dental technicians. In fact, I employ one in my dental office uh, several days a week, and he is amazing. He makes me look good. So thank God I've got him. But digital dentures is what we're going to be talking about here today, because digital dentures is all about that clinical necessity. How do we go from, all right, clinician trying to think about how I go ahead and make impressions to send to a laboratory technician for you to do your wonderful quality, high quality stamp on just beautiful aesthetic dentistry. And what it comes down to is, this is that while there's going to be quite a few uh, dentists, maybe not that many though, that are actually going to get into making their own things. I still think it's probably going to be less than three to 5% of dentists who are ever going to be able or whoever going to want to really make their own dentures and prosthetics. So what it comes down to is, is how does the dentist with the patient sitting right there, how do we make our intraoral edential scans or how do we transfer our denture impressions to the laboratory? And what it comes down to is, is that everybody gets all excited about, you know, intraoral edential scans for complete denture patients. And yeah, I've done it before. Edential scans with an intraoral scanner, Trios, Medit, 3M, you know, Prime Scan, whatever. It works. But the reality is, is it kind of sucks. It just, it's a pain in the butt. You can't establish borders and it's clunky. So several years ago, I started to kind of play around with the concept of taking the patient's existing denture and then doing what we call a reference denture technique, taking the patient's denture, which in this particular case, the patient came to me and says, doc, I've got a cracked denture. And uh, the patient's been wearing this denture for about a year, year and a half. You know, it was a um, printed interim denture. And yes, printed dentures do break. Okay, so do milled ones, so do processed acrylic, but in all reality, patient's been wearing this interim denture that's 3D printed for about a year and a half, very pleased with it. Calls me up and says, Doc, it's cracked. So I, he comes in, he says, don't worry, I fixed it. And he took some super glue and he glued it back together. He says, but I, I really think I need, you know, I got to get this thing repaired. Repairing 3D printed dentures is kind of a pain. To tell you the truth, I just take the denture and I just want to convert it now into either a milled denture, high quality denture, whatever you want to call it. If you consider milled to be better than printed, et cetera, which is a topic for a different day, I think they both can be equally as good in the right hands. But today's presentation is about this, taking your denture patient who says, doctor, I got a broken denture or doctor, I got a denture here and uh, you know, I just think it's time for a new one. Maybe it's not broken. How does the clinician do our work digitally, simply, and transfer it to the technician so that way your work is also simple. So what I found out very early on was this is just basically your analog workflow, except that we're going to digitize it. So my analog workflow would be taking the patient's denture, border molding it with whatever stuff you want to use. If you don't want to even border mold, just wash it with a little bit of PBS. Totally fine. So then it's what we call a closed mouth reline impression. So we're going to go ahead and impression material inside of the denture, realign, patient bites down, centric, border mold, border mold, border mold, uh, stick out the tongue, do all your nor normal border molding procedures. In this particular case, uh, swallow, open really big, move your jaw side to side so you get your notches uh, in your impression. And the reality is, is, is that you're going to be doing your impression at a closed bite. So in theory, you have now Hopefully not open the vertical too much, maybe a little bit, a little bit. I'm going to you know, qualify here, a prosthodontist that might be watching here too. Yes, you could potentially open the vertical a little bit here, but for the most part, take a look here. I, I have a little bit of tray show through here on my impression, which is the denture, a little bit here, a little bit here, and a little bit here. So it means I probably opened the vertical maybe a quarter to a half millimeter, no big deal. But the difference is now is, is, is that when I do a closed mouth, patient bites down, border molded impression. I now have the patient's denture, 
teeth, soft tissue impression, and borders all in one. So what we're going to do now is this is we're going to go ahead, and I apologize if this is a little bit slow and clunky. I practice in a rural part of California. My internet speed is no joke, 15 megabytes down and 8 megabits up. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take out my intraoral scanner and just start scanning the denture. You can scan using an intraoral scanner anything inside the mouth, of course, or you can scan outside the mouth. So what I'm doing now is, is I'm taking my denture that's relined, closed bite vertical, so the centric is correct, the vertical is about right, but now I'm starting to scan on the impression side. Using, in this particular case, this is a medit scanner. You can use a trios, you can use a prime scan, you can go ahead and use um, care streams also. Uh, iTero, good luck, but it can be done. Omnicam, if you're lucky, maybe. I've seen a few people do that. But for the most part, uh, Trios, Medit, and, um, and Prime Scan are kind of the go-to scanners that can do this. Now, take a look here. This is kind of interesting. Since I'm using, in this particular case, um, up until a few weeks ago, 3Shape wouldn't allow you to export color, which now they do, thankfully. Thank you, 3Shape. Um, but at the time when I did this case, this was with my Medit i500. Since I'm scanning color, I scan the impression, and then I go slowly back and forth to the teeth. And now you see how I'm kind of rolling the impression. I'm not just going brrr around the outside of the, of the impression. So this particular presentation is not to train everybody on this particular scanning technique, but what we're going to do now with it, how it applies to the dental technician, what we're going to be setting up 3Shape and ExoCAD for, because I have a lot of doctors doing this technique. But now the problem is, is they'll say, well, I sent it to my lab technician or I sent it to a place like Full Contour or I have my digital design. And they say, well, I, I don't know what to do with that file. That's going to be the key. Because when I'm scanning 360 degrees here, I'm capturing the soft tissue side and the teeth side in one scan. Cool. I have, assuming this denture impression was made at the proper centric position, the patient's about satisfied with the tooth position, meaning that doctor, yeah, these are about, okay, this is about the right size of teeth that I'm going to use here. Uh, doctor, maybe you could maybe make it a little bit whiter. Maybe instead of A35, you know, do A2 or something, whatever. The patient doesn't say that, but some patients do. Uh, some patients, I am A1. <laughs> okay. So what happens is, is, is that what we're doing is, this is you're capturing all the relevant anatomy and that part is key. Okay, so what we need to do is, is we need to figure out how to extract how ExoCAD and 3Shape are going to make this simple. Because, yeah, I get it, everybody, especially if you're an ExoCAD user, Exo, or 3Shape. Uh, 3Shape allows you to go ahead and bring in a 360 denture scan and turn it into a denture. But it's not perfect. Uh, there's some times where we do these scans and it just go and it just doesn't work. Um, or you just, it goes, oh, I don't like that. Restart over. And you're like, ah! Uh, so what happens is, this is that you know, I just keep going back to Mesh Mixer. Uh, could you use Mesh Mixer to take this file now and to extract the relevant anatomy out of it? And just for good measure in this particular scanning demonstration, I'm also going to scan the opposing. So imagine this, realign impression, take the denture out of the mouth, scan the denture, then go to the mouth and now scan the opposing arch. So I'm scanning the mandibular in this particular patient. So we'll just complete the mandibular scan. So now the denture sitting on a countertop somewhere. Complete the mandibular uh, opposing arch, whatever it is. If it's a denture, you can scan it outside of the mouth. If it's natural teeth, scan inside the mouth. Uh, if you have a desktop scanner, especially for our uh, technicians, if there's any dentures you know, watching in the audience that all you have is a desktop scanner, you can totally do this with a desktop scanner. Just take your denture, put it in the desktop scanner. Um, you just need to take your stone model um, and then also put in the intro or into the desktop scanner, and then you have to put them in an in a approximate freehand bite into your desktop scanner too. And you're going to do the same thing clinically. And that's sometimes where some clinicians and dentists kind of get lost. Because if you can do it in the laboratory version, you can also do it in the oral version and in a lot, many times vice versa. But here's the secret now. We take the denture, put it back in the mouth, and then you have the patient bite down and scan the occlusion just with your medit or three-shaped scanner. So what we're doing is, is, is that you don't have to do this. I've even, but I recommend it. I, I've even taken these dentures and just literally only scan the patient's denture 
and uh, done this technique that I'm about to show you with mesh mixer and exocat and back and forth. So you don't actually need the opposing dentition because assuming that the patient was biting correctly in the centric um, and also the assuming uh, that, you know, the vertical is about right and assuming that the laboratory or the patient wants teeth that are somewhat similar to what he or she has, uh, then you can go ahead and skip the opposing. But I, I just recommend, especially to our technicians, if you're going to start working with dentists associated with this, just tell your dentist to go ahead and scan the denture 360, put it back in the mouth, scan the lower, scan the bite, and on each side. Now, what do we do with these scans? So now we have an exported file format. In this particular case from our Medit i500, we have in this particular case PLY file format. I'm a huge fan of PLY file format. Uh, it's a little bit easier to work with. The file sizes are a little bit lower. Uh, OBJ, nah. Um, so I've already kind of hopefully finger put a couple of feedback reports in the ExoCAD. Uh, now that three shape allows you to have PLYs, not OBJ, PLY. Um, hopefully um, ExoCAD will allow you to go ahead. I know it can import PLY, but it doesn't allow you to export PLY, which is sometimes a pain. Okay, so that's kind of setting us up. So now imagine this situation. You have this box sitting in front of you. Dentist sent this to you. How do I take these files into 3Shape or ExoCAD? So let's go ahead and kind of go into this because this is our goal. The, the goal of this patient was to digitally design, and this digital design was an ExoCAD, uh, digital design the teeth to be 3D printed, and then digitally design the base to be milled. So it's kind of like a combination effect. And here's my technician, uh, Chris, uh, who is a CDT, uh, working with me in my laboratory, uh, getting this finished. And this is literally straight out of uh, kind of the machine. Uh, I also printed a couple of models. ExoCAD has a neat feature in their digital denture um, that you can go ahead and still do a model builder procedure to it, where uh, then you can even check, um, you know, the centric and vertical position, you know, while you're doing your processing procedures, which is boom, super cool. Okay, so how did I get to, uh, the denture realign scan to ExoCAD of 3Shape? So let's go ahead and jump into this uh, because uh, make sure I don't screw it up. Um, okay, hopefully everybody sees my screen how we are right now. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I have that folder sitting right here on my screen, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of get rid of my quick access thing here so that way it's clean. And then hopefully everybody can see me here. And then also, I'm going to hopefully be able to get back into here. Let's see if I'll be able to get back into here. I might have to re-remote connect. Uh, I have a remote connection here set up with my office. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it connects. Okay. Sorry, I don't want to <laughs> give everybody my password. I know you'll all be trustworthy. Okay, because my goal right now is, is to get this into ExoCAD, and this is kind of where we're going to set everybody up, because we get into ExoCAD, and, and now this is kind of what it looks like, and you're saying, well, shoot, how do I make a denture on this? I know I've got my antagonist here, everything looks good, but my goal is to do this where I can go ahead and digitally subtract the teeth. And now I have the jaw scan at the proper centric uh, vertical position. And then on top of that, I've got a wax rim scan that I can go ahead and use to do my digital denture design. And that's kind of our goal. There's two ways to get there. Um, the first way to get there is to use mesh mixer. And you can also do this in ExoCAD. You can sort of do this in three shape, but wow, it's a little bit confusing and complicated. In my personal opinion, I know if you're a heavy three shape user, you're like, oh yeah, I just do this and scan it and do this. And I'm like, oh my God, I get a headache. But let's go ahead and open up mesh mixer. So mesh mixer makes this pretty darn simple. And the reason why I like mesh mixer here is I just take this, open up mesh mixer, and there's two ways to bring in your files if you're kind of new to mesh mixer. You can click here, left click on import, or you can drag your window down to your folder and then literally left click and then drag this onto mesh mixer. And then that loads in our scan of our denture 360 degrees. So right now this is in PLY file format. Mesh Mixer makes this pretty easy to work with, uh, but let's go ahead and check out this file. We can see here we've got a 360 degree denture. Why color is sometimes relevant for working in things like ExoCAD and 3Shape is you can see your impression. You can also see, very importantly, areas of impression pressure. So I had a little bit of pressure on my impression right in here. I had a little bit of pressure here because there's show through of the pink, and then a little bit right in this area, right in here. So that allows me to do two things. Number one, as a technician, uh, or dentist playing as a technician, I can go ahead and see here, yep, okay, I didn't open up the vertical too much. Hmm, I've got pressure here. It's almost like a tripod effect. Boom, boom, and then boom. Okay, 
So yeah, also as a you know technician, putting my technician cap on for a second, I could say, wow, there's a little bit of pressure in that area. Maybe I'll add a little bit of block out to that area. Hmm. Maybe that way it'll be a little bit more passive when it gives the dog. The dentist, the dentist is like, oh my God, that denture fits so good. You're the best. Cool. That's awesome. We want to you know, aim to please. And then on top of that, for me as a clinician too, how this is relevant is when I do my reline impression, I also take a Thompson stick and I mark the post dam right here. Now you can see it. I mark the post dam, put the denture back in, do the bite scan, remove the denture. Now I've got this great little purple mark. And when I scan that in with a color scanner and export PLY or OBJ files, I can then see in color instead of just in pure black and white. If I kind of go into wireframe mode, I don't want to go into black and white in this because then I'll have to go and change the mesh mister settings. But the idea is, 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 yeah, you can see the fold. And on this particular patient, the fold is the place where, where it started to droop right here. Yep, that's where I'm going to set my post dam, but not on every patient. I'm a big fan of setting the post dam, you know, with the Thompson stick myself, just because you know, I believe in garbage in, garbage out. So if I don't give my technician the best amount of data and information, how is he going to be able to give me the best possible denture that I could do? Okay, so here's my denture. Also, as a little quick pro tip for our um, uh, dentists that are tuning in here, uh, one thing I also like to do is I take a little bit of wax, or you can even use a squirt of blue bite or whatever impression material, put it right on the palate. Why? Because sometimes when you're taking an intraoral scan and you're, in, you know, and you're going, scanning the soft tissue side, you come to the teeth side over here and it picks up all the teeth side perfectly. Then you get to here and then it goes and it gets lost. Hopefully they don't make a meme out of that one. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, it'll just kind of do one of those things and it will get lost and then you'll have inaccuracy on your intraoral scan. So I take a little bit of wax, just go shove it right on the palate. Usually put it into a shape, something like this. In this particular case, I had a little excess wax here from my, um, from my border molding procedure. I just kind of folded it over so that way it doesn't get lost here. And then I took a little piece of wax because when the patient bit down, he kind of, whoop, whoop, the denture was doing one of those things. So I took a little bit of wax and I just kind of covered that little um, broken line of his denture. So that way now it serves two purposes. It glues the denture back together and then also it helps me with the skin. Okay, so let's jump right into it here. So how do I go ahead and do this? In uh, our ExoCAD or three shape software it works in a similar way. And also just as a, as a comparison, I'll, I'll bring over our lower jaw scan. When I do that, I click the append button. So that way it'll create a second layer. So now we can agree that we're at the proper centric right here and vertical. So I'll turn off the lower jaw scan. Now let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to come over here to my select function, just left click here. And it's going to open up like this disc or this like kind of like a uh, circle. If I select something like here, I left click and select, that selects it in Mesh Mixer. And if I do that selection function, it'll bring up a secondary window. That secondary window, if I hover above it, I get a whole set of different interesting and cool things that I can do in Mesh Mixer. So I come over to edit, hover above it, and then click on the, not erase and fill function, but the discard function. It just cuts it away. So we're not really looking at much right now, but to the trained eye, if you look inside of here, my ridge is inside of there. That's the key. Take a look right inside of there. What is an impression? We take an alginate. Imagine this has got a tray on it. Pour it up in stone. Flip it over. That's what we're going to do in Mesh Mixer. I have to extract the physical model out of the Mesh Mixer scan. So you can do this. You can come in here and just start selecting and come across here and start selecting. And this is a fairly tedious process, but it, it's very effective. It works. Alternatively, if you hit the control A button, it'll select all. So it'll select the entire denture. And then you can flip it over and go to the intaglio surface. Come over here to where it says size, which is the size of your selector tool. I'm going to go ahead and rate, put that right on about 50 or something like that. If you hold the shift key down, it does the opposite. So if I let go of shift, I just start clicking, I start selecting. But if you hold shift, it will do the opposite of what you're doing. So you can do this. You know, there's other little different ways to, to kind of make this faster, just depending upon how it works for you. Me personally, I find it, you know, actually a little bit easier just to select the outside part of the denture uh, rather than deselect. But you, know, you can use whatever technique you'd like to use here. Um, I just find Mesh Mixer, this little tool, to be very simple and very predictable. You know, it takes a couple of extra moments, but it always works.
You can also do this in um, ExoCAD and then 3Shape. Um, but like I said, it's a little bit cumbersome um, just to kind of do it in those softwares. But I will go through how to do it in ExoCAD also, just because it's really, really simple to do it in ExoCAD. So I'm just completing my selection. And I recommend trying to capture as much of the border as you can. And you can also do kind of like a linear tool where you select it and you deselect with the linear tool. But sometimes the fingers get in the way and they get messed up. No big deal. This, to me, takes an extra few seconds. Just paint it. It works extremely easily. I select the entire surface except for that impression. Okay. Now, I left this kind of right here. I can also go ahead and deselect that portion of it, even though I'm going to cut it away. Right here, I, I made a boo-boo. No big deal. I'll come back in here and just kind of reselect that portion in there. I like to keep as much of the border as possible, so that makes a good land area for us to go ahead and, and do our denture work. Same thing in here. I'm going to go ahead and select over here. So once I made that selection, come up here to edit and click on discard, or you can just simply hit the X key on your keyboard and it will cut it away. So hopefully it'll work. Sometimes it crashes. That's mesh mixer. No big deal. And then you say, oh, look, I did it. Looks good. The only problem was, let's take a look. Wow. Why is it like a zebra? Well, no big deal. We'll get to that in a second. But take a look here. I'm looking for this blue line to make sure the blue line goes all the way around. Take a look here. I've got a little blue dot right in here, and I've got a little bit of blue dot right in here. That means I accidentally cut away a portion of the impression. No big deal. Go up to the actions undo function, which is, in my opinion, the most amazing part of digital technology is, is control Z or edit undo. And sometimes mesh mixer will just kind of like take a little break. It'll kind of like think a little bit. Sometimes it'll crash. We know that. That's kind of the nature of it. I'll come back into here and say, oh, there's that little dot shift uncheck here. And I had one that was hiding right there. There it is. Do, 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 do. Unchecked. X on the keyboard. And you're good to go. Alternatively, if it did, you know, you had a tiny little hole, you can easily fill that in with a little bit of kind of algorithm data. Um, but, you know, it takes a few seconds just to click undo and then redo. Okay, so now I've got my impression. Cool. But now we have to go ahead and flip it over. So at this point, hit Control A on your keyboard. You're going to select the whole thing, go to Actions, and you're going to go, oh, pardon me, Edit, and you're going to go to Flip Normals. Edit, Flip Normals. So when you do that now, I have a model. Pretty cool. And you say, oh, no, look, I lost a border. You can go back and click on Edit, Undo, Edit, Undo, if you wanted to. Do that one more time, just so that way, if you make a mistake, sometimes I do that, and I go, oops, I took away a little bit too much. You need to do a little bit more this direction. No big deal. Edit, Undo, Edit, Undo, and I'll go back. Come back into here and say, yep, oh, there it is. Hold Shift. I'm going to just go ahead and deselect that a touch. That looks good. And then X key on the keyboard. Cuts it away. Control A. Edit, flip normals, and there we go. That's a pretty good looking clean model. Taking a look, I'm going to turn back on my lower jaw scan. Now I have my upper jaw and my lower jaw in about the correct dimensions. Pretty simple. So I'm going to turn off that lower jaw for a second because now what we can do is, is also another thing. Some of the software, unfortunately, ExoCAD and 3Shape, I don't know why, but they make it so difficult for a post-palatal seal. It's like, why? Why do you make it so difficult? Draw a line, design it. ExoCAD makes this pretty simple. Um, or pardon me, Mesh Mixer. So one thing you do is just hit your select key again. Usually I go down to like minus or like 10 or like 15. Then I just trace that purple line. And maybe I went a little bit too forward there. Maybe I went a little bit too back. No big deal. I'm just going to trace that line. And then depending upon your philosophy, you know, you can draw whatever sort of post palatal seal that you want. I don't know. It's a pretty bad one. I made asymmetrical. Oh, I'll survive. Whatever. Um, then what you can do, if you want to go ahead, is a little special trick. I'm going to select that. And you can hit edit. Um, uh, we're going to smooth the borders, which is just B. I don't, I don't remember where it is. I think it's like deform. Smooth, yeah, smooth borders. I hear smooth boundary B. So modify B. I just know all the keystrokes. So B on the keyboard is going to go ahead and just kind of smooth that boundary a little bit. And then what you can do is, I don't think it's going to like it. I got something rough here. Oh, I think it's that thing right there. Let's see if that does it. There we go. 
Well, sometimes that was a mesh mixer thing. So I was like, oops, I have a little hole right here. I hit B on the keyboard and it gives me like this little, oh, there, fixed it. <laughs> That's mesh mixer. So anyways, um, sometimes if it works, just do a little bit extra selection, hit B on the keyboard. Maybe I'm going to kind of do this. No big deal. Maybe I'll undo this here. Oops, there you go. I'll fix this line here. That's the really nice thing about this mesh mixer stuff. Smooth out the border. Hit B on your keyboard. Hit accept. And now you've got a nice border line here. Uh, what you can do now is, is just do edit um, extrude. So you're going to go to edit extrude or D on your keyboard. And then, you know, here you can see it's a little bit taller. You're just going to change this to a negative number, this offset. So negative like 0.5 or whatever. And now you've got a post am. Pretty simple. Um, you can also play with this a little bit if you like a little bit more, a little bit less. You can use whatever setting you want for this. Usually I kind of do like a negative 0.2 or something like that just because it's just a little bump right in there. If you worry like, hey, it's, this is a little bit sharp for the patient, no big deal. I'm going to hit accept just because I'll save this. Anytime you're in Mesh Mixer, just hit the escape key twice. And now you can see here that I have that post am cut in. Everything here looks good. That purple line guided me, um, and it's in there. It's a little hard to see in color, um, but that's no big deal. No, we can still work with that. Alternatively, you can do just the sculpt tool. So I'll show you a secondary approach here, which I don't think is as good um, but or as fast, but it's how it's done in 3Shape and ExoCAD, which in my opinion, oh, there should be a better way. Uh, but I'm going to click on select right here and then come right here. Oh, pardon me. Sculpt. Left click sculpt, go to brushes, and then what you're going to do is, is just do like a, um, uh, I, I never do it with this, so I think it's like in flight. Yeah, I'll do like in flight. I'm not sure if it's one of those things, but uh, draw two, draw one, I don't know, just play around with it. Usually def uh, in flight, so then I'll come into here and then hold the shift key down, which will kind of make it go um, the opposite direction, uh, or is it control? Yeah, it's control party. So control, hold control, and then I can kind of carve that in freehand. And this will be a little bit more common uh, for our users that are more um, you know, familiar with this approach in the ExoCAD or 3Shape software, which is the exact protocol of what you would use in both of those softwares to carve in a post-AM. Um, I just find that this is a little bit clunky, but it does work. So if you like it, you can do that. I can kind of do like a whole section in here and ramp it up and make it look all sophisticated. You can do it that way. So that's all set. Okay, so now say I have my post amp completed, my model flipped over, and I have my opposing jaw scan. You don't actually need the opposing jaw scan, so I'll just leave it out of there. How do I take this file now from Mesh Mixer and now get it ready so that way it can be imported for ExoCAD? So file, don't do file save as, but do file export. So I'm going to click on file export, and then I'll click on desktop. Uh, open up that patient's file, and then I'm going to go ahead and call it an STL file if you want an STL, but if you want to be cool, new color, <laughs> I'm going to save it as PLY, and I'll just go ahead and call it man jaw scan, which I already did as a practice, but I'll call it two, whatever. Uh, there you go. It saves it as man jaw scan two. Okay. Um, so before I go ahead, actually, I'll just for demonstration purposes, and um, I'll take a little pause for a break for questions, um, but I'm going to go into, hopefully this will work. Oh, no. Hang in there, everybody. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, there it goes. All right. I'm going to stop my screen just for a second because I'm going to show my phone. Okay. Hold on. All right. Now screen sharing is back. Okay. So now I'm remoted into my computer at the office because I kind of suck and I don't bring my dongle home and I just remote everything. Just a cool little pro tip. If you, I learned this from the ExoCAD folks, uh, Dave, Dave's amazing. Um, he was saying, you do a lot of remote connection. I said, yeah, hold control, hold shift, hit the F3 key. This, if you pick up one pro tip, if you, especially in the COVID world and there's a special ExoCAD function, control, shift, F3. And it says, whoa, you're in remote view. I say, yeah. And what it does is it makes it, you know, like, well, this is it off. And it, if you're remoting an ExoCAD and you're like, you hold down right click, it goes kind of like a space. So if I hold control shift F3, now it's turned back on. And now this is the same motion. It's like working at your computer if you're having to do remote designing. So a little pro tip, especially if anybody is, you know, into um, remote, which a lot of us are in these days. But in these days, uh, I don't know. I just love being at home designing in my underwear. 
Sorry, a little TMI to everybody. That's just me, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a... Oh, no, I just logged out of it. Lord, I got to lay off the coffee here, everybody. Uh, all right. Uh, doctor, uh, yes. I have a question. Um, uh, hold on one sec. So uh, once I bring this up into ExoCAD, uh, that's kind of what it looks like. My um, jaw scan is what you saw in Mesh Mixer. And then I can show you, I'll import the scan into ExoCAD. We'll cover a couple questions and I'll show you how to create a, um, a well, I'll just show it really quick because this is I'm showing you the ExoCAD approach is a much different way. Um, so when I create a work order for a digital denture in ExoCAD, I'm going to go ahead and click new. Um, just decide who my client is and who my technician is. And I'm going to call this DDC. Here's my demo. And I'm just going to choose my teeth. So I left click on tooth number two. I'm going to left click on full denture. In this particular case, I'm going to select print base and denture and leave everything pretty much default. Uh, you can change your settings if you want to. I'm just showing you which files to choose to get set up. Hold shift. We're going to choose two to 15. I need just one tooth on my antagonist. Left click on antagonist. Click OK. All right. And then say whatever, two stone models and occlusion. Hit save. So when I import my files, when I click on design, I know I didn't set that work order correct, uh, but I want to just show you which files to import because I know Sander wants to get into some questions about ExoCAD or um, Mesh Mixer specifically. So I click on desktop. Now, when it asks me for my jaw scan, I'm going to bring in man jaw scan, which I already did as an example just to make sure it worked. You know, like, oh, look, here's my bread. It popped out of the oven. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to click on open. So that's going to be my man jaw scan. Well, the one that I showed is jaw scan two in that previous example. Now, my bite rim scan is going to be my original 360 denture. That's the secret. It's going to be your original 360 denture, which becomes your bite rim. Um, and then your antagonist is just your lower jaw. So now we just go through ExoCAD or 3Shape, whatever workflow you're used to using with these softwares. Um, I won't go through it because, like I said, this, this particular video is aimed specifically at you know, how we leverage a Mesh Mixer. And if anybody wants to, especially after some questions, I can go through uh, how to do the exact same thing in ExoCAD. Um, so right now, there we go. We're just going through the Dutcher steps. Sander, take it away. Yeah, we had some questions. Uh, yes. Okay, so um, uh, do you scan? I have a question. Do you scan your full arches cases with uh, with your method or always? Or are we talking full arch fixed? Or I don't know what full. I I would assume full arch fixed. Well, well I have another question uh, mm -hmm. regarding uh, if you can scan anything you want with method i five hundred. Anything. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes it's a little hard if it's a really like, say you were to try to like scan like, uh, you know, like here, I've got this pen. Uh, it's really hard to scan something like a pen because it's really smooth and there's not a lot of like structure and things associated with that. Uh, but say I wanted to scan, um, uh, I don't know, um, you know, whatever I could scan like my USB key or whatever I got laying around on my desk over here. Um, you can scan pretty much anything. Obviously, the Meta I 500 is designed to be an intraoral scanner, so that the principal action of it is just to scan inside the mouth. Um, however, you know, there's impression modes and things that you can use on your Meta I 500, which I don't even use. It's kind of just it's so many little things that add to complexity. I literally want my scanner is going to turn on, start scanning, and then all of a sudden I'm going to do more of my work at the back end, uh, which I find is a little bit more predictable. Uh, but the question specifically about dentistry is, is, is that do I scan all my cases? And the answer is I scan the vast majority of my cases, full arch fixed, uh, crown and bridge dentistry. I haven't made a PBS impression for a regular tooth crown in like five years. Uh, for full arch fixed, um, if I have enough teeth where I have good anatomical landmarks, then absolutely I can. Uh, if I am doing full arch implantology, the answer is yes. I do scan a lot of those cases, uh, and it can work. Uh, the only tricky thing with full arch implantology with scanned bodies is, is, is that's not predictable. Nine out of ten cases will go, but one out of 10 cases won't. So for me and my practice, predictability is everything. So on, on some of my full arch fix cases, I'll scan and then heck, I'll still make a PBS impression also at the same time, whatever.
Great, great. And and for this technique, uh, for these type of cases, uh, full dentures uh, or these relying uh, situations, do you use the same scanner or you depend uh, of the situation, you use another scanner? No, oh, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, I personally in my office have three scanners um, and I've used many, many more. Um, so the ones I use in, in pretty much everyday uh, situations is uh, my Medidai 500 three-shaped trios, and I have a 3M or Midmark uh, True Definition scanner, which I still do occasionally use. Um, those, all three of those scanners can scan a denture 360 degrees. Uh, the Omnicam really doesn't work that great. Uh, I've seen a few people do it, but it's literally like you want to rip your brains out when you're done. Uh, the Prime Scan, however, Prime Scan is a fabulous scanner, and it can scan dentures 360 degrees. In fact, at the IDS show last year, I carry around a denture in my pocket because I'm a weirdo freak, um, and I was scanning dentures with all the new scanners, um, and um, and yeah, the Prime Scan did really, really well, and uh, I've done it a few times at some study clubs and things like that. Uh, iTero, it kind of works, but it, it falls short a little bit. CareStream does okay. Um, for experienced users, but for, for novice users, it, it's a very difficult scanner to use for Denture 360 scanning. Uh, in my personal opinion, the one that's the easiest and most predictable is probably a toss-up between Medit and 3Shape in terms of Denture scanning. Great. Great. Okay. All right. You can continue with the presentation. Awesome. Great questions. Okay. Okay. So uh, what we're doing now is hopefully, hopefully didn't log me out again. Oh, Lord. Sorry, I got like patient stuff on there. It's supposed to be like secured and like HIPAA. Give me another second. I'm going to pause again for another moment. re log back in. No problem. Some, somebody suggested to you try, if you have tried Splashtop. Oh, I have. <laughs> uh, Splashtop's pretty good. I like it a lot. You know, I'm just kind of an old-fashioned, old, I guess maybe an old part these days, but I just like log me in. It works really, really well. Unfortunately, you do have to pay for it, which kind of stinks. Uh, I've, I've used so many of the remote viewers. Um, there's something about log me in that just works. And um, I don't know. I would love it. Uh, reach out to me on Facebook if you do a lot of remote designing um, and you've got a better solution. If you think Splashtop works, I'll, I'll I'll try it again. When I tried it that one time, uh, it was like, okay, uh, but maybe I just need to give it a, another go. So uh, I'm always open to learning, especially since you know this is costing me like 300 bucks a year for this stupid log me in. <laughs> so let me blow this up big now so that way everybody can see. Um, and Sandra, you can still see my screen, okay? Yes, I can see the screen. Yeah. Okay, great. So... Now, I'm going through basically the, the same denture workflow, and I've got my bite rim now, bite rim, which is my denture. So I can come in here and start doing my model analysis. Same thing in three shape. Uh, when you do it in three shape, exact same thing, wax rim will be the denture 360 scan. Um, and sometimes you might have to convert it to POY. I'm pretty sure that, that three shape will import the POY. I haven't played around too much with that because I, I do most of my color work in uh, ExoCAD. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you can just do this exact same thing. Worst case scenario, one neat thing about a mesh mixer is this is that if you wanted to, uh, say you're working with a software that says, hey, OBJ, POI, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, just come up here to file, export. And then uh, what I'll do is it'll just come in here and, and just select STL. And I'll call this... Um, Man, I call it man, and I'm really not thinking today. Max jaw scan. So um, now it's a jaw scan, and if I open up that folder and I'll bring in a brand new mesh mixer, it will be um, in STL file format. So here with a new mesh mixer, I will drag in the STL file. So now you can bring this into whatever you want. So you can use Mesh Mixer even to convert PLY, OBJ, STL. Uh, I could, you know, uh, grab this in, um, is it STL? Uh, what you can do is you drag this now into whatever software you want and it will work as well. It won't be in color in some softwares, but it will work for most softwares. Uh, you can also easily convert color back and forth. But I do a lot of that these days, to tell you the truth, I do most of it in Exocan just because it's super awesome sauce. Okay, so now I've got this open here. I can go through my denture work. So say I wanted to do everything in ExoCAD. Maybe you don't want to use Mesh Mixer. You want to use ExoCAD for everything. Uh, and I give mad shout-out props to Josh Jackson at Evolve, um, who kind of showed me some of this digital denture stuff in ExoCAD because I was just a baby. Um, and his course was the only course um, 
uh, in-person course uh, that I took on CAD software. So Josh, if you're listening, yeah, you, you should be embarrassed because you're amazing. Okay. So when I'm coming into this software, so if, if I went a little bit too quick for our, our, our newer users, but uh, ExoCAD has two different ways you can kind of go into the software. There's a few others. You can go direct into Model Builder and into, um, if you have the um, uh, ExoPlane, you can go right into that. But on my, on my start bar, I, I put in here Dental DB, which opens up the dental database, or you can open up just the dental CAD app folder by itself. So if you go to your ExoCAD folder, uh, which is, you know, this thing, and you go to see something, and you go to your latest version of ExoCAD, and then you go to dental CAD app, double click there, and then you go to this bin folder, double click here, uh, you can just double click the dental CAD app exe. And in my case, I just went right click, make a shortcut, drag this to my start bar so that we don't need to keep doing that explore every time. So now when I left click on Dental CAD app, it's going to bring up the Dental CAD app software, which is really important for our, our ExoCAD users that are kind of you know doing some ExoCAD hackering. And uh, hacking is a good word. Uh, people tell me it's a bad word. I have many, many people tell me saying that hacking is a bad thing. Uh, no, but hacking is a very good thing. So long as you're not, uh, you know, still a teenager changing your grades or you know, doing something that is probably illegal, um, you know, maybe don't do that hacking. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm a firm believer in hacking because it's, it's, it's using our software to our fullest. So when I open up the Dental Cat app, you're going to left click on this load button up here. And then you're going to left click here on load scan data. So when I open up that, I have my folder already populated and I can go ahead and open up my upper jaw POI which is the export directly from my Medit, or now my 3Shape Trio scanner, uh, or your other scanners, or whatever you're using. This, but You can also use STL. It doesn't have to be PLY, um, but here you go. There's your PLY file format. So now, does it ask me for antagonist? No, I don't really need to. What do I need the antagonist now at this point? So what you can see here is, this is that now I've got ExoCAD loaded up only with this, this kind of denture. So I'm going to go ahead and control shift F3 again, so I don't drive myself bananas. Hit OK. Now what I need to do is just kind of tell this, uh, I don't know, do a number eight inlay. It's eight inlay, click next, and click finished. So that way I kind of have to tell ExoCAD I'm doing something that isn't just bringing this file into the thing. And you have to do that because when you left click export, if you are expert, uh, when I go into the expert mode and I click on tools, if you don't define the work as something, it won't allow you to add additional meshes. I don't know why that is. Um, message me if somebody knows a better way. This is just the way that I learned. Um, but now it allows me to add additional meshes if I wanted to, um, which is fine for this task. So I can add the opposing if I really wanted to. Click on load and I'll bring in the lower jaw scan, which looks just like you're in mesh mixer now at this point. Whatever. Scans in there. We're all good. So now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my opposing. And what you're going to do is you're going to left click your, your scan in expert mode. And when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on Scan Data Editor. And when I do that, it allows me to kind of come in here and start playing with some of this, just like I'm working in Mesh Mixer. The only th thing that's kind of cool, though, is this is that ExoCAD, if you've got a pretty clean looking denture scan, uh, ExoCAD allows you to go ahead and um, select by the surface um, or select only the surface, which is kind of cool. So if I kind of like left click, to select and double click to select and I select that surface and I flip it over, it doesn't select the under surface, which is pretty cool. I kind of like that. Um, however, it gets a little bit messy to tell you the truth. So uh, you can do that. Uh, you can just do the whole thing that way. But what I find really, really easy is just kind of click select all and then flip it over and then do a similar thing like you would do in uh, Mesh Mixer. Except that right here, I'll go ahead and say select by clicking on surface only. And then this time, I can kind of like come in here and um, come on you. Oh, shoot. There we go. Middle button. Select only surface. So now I can go ahead and draw an outline. And it will only select the soft tissue surface of the impression. Double click. Yeah, pardon me. I have to think, hold shift here. I always forget that key. So I'm going to hold shift. And just draw an outline here, and then double click, and then it will just deselect there. But you have to be careful because then you know you can see here I have to like hold shift deselect that. Um, but it's also a pretty slick way of doing it because if you just kind of like come in here and change your angle, so I'm doing it with two different ways. 
The shift key is held down. One way to select is by clicking once, letting go of the left click, and then clicking this linear type of selection, which is pretty awesome for some things. But then when I get to right here, I want to hold shift and then hold the left click mouse down and it allows me to kind of draw a quick line, which when I double click at the end or let go of the click, it then finishes the selection tool. And you can see here, you can kind of meticulously come in here, just take your time, make sure this is done right, and come along in here. And I don't know. Um, Josh doesn't like it when I say this, but I just, and probably the ExoCAD team. <laughs> uh, but if you, the ExoCAD team, if you're listening, maybe make this a little bit easier. I don't know if there's a better way. If somebody knows a better way, message me, just because this, I've played around with a bunch of different ways. This is just seems to be the way that works for me. Maybe it's because of all those years of Mesh Mixer. Um, but whatever. I've just deselected basically the impression pretty much everything that I can see, except there's one little yellow dot here. And then I click this delete button. Once I have everything in orange, I'll click that delete. And now I've done essentially the exact same thing uh, in Mesh Mixer. So if you want to do it completely in ExoCAD, it's awesome. There are some cases where I will do this in ExoCAD um, and versus Mesh Mixer. I don't know why. I don't know what those are. Just sometimes it's a little bit easier. Then, then here's the secret and the secret sauce in ExoCAD. You have to right click um, to flip it. So we're going to take our impression flip it over. You have to right click in your scan data editor, uh, right click, click, then with your left click, show triangle orientation. So right now the red is kind of like the upside down scan. So that's the zebra pattern in Mesh Mixer. Um, this is the upside down. This is, or this is the normal side up. This is the upside down. So now what I do is then you right click again, and then you click on invert triangle orientation. And now you have flipped it over. Uh, at this point, what you can do is um, whatever. I don't even click the OK button. I just click right click somewhere out in the purple space, save scene as, and then I'll come back here to my desktop. And then uh, this particular uh, in ExoCAD, this is the part I was alluding to earlier. Uh, you can here save as POY if you wanted to. I wish it was its own category, maybe just to make it a little bit easier because sometimes it gets a little bit goofy. Um, but I'll save it as OPJ just because that's pretty easy. So I'll call this Max. Jaw scan, not mandible, Mike, not mandible, Max. <laughs> All right, save visible objects, and then the key is, is it'll save it, and then you can even just, you can you could do it all in here if you wanted to, if you're worried about reorienting the scans and things of that nature, and it gets a little bit mixed up, which sometimes happens. So let's double check our work. So again, I'm going to come back into Mesh Mixer. I always use Mesh Mixer. It's so simple. I just Use Mesh Mixer to say, okay, did I do that task properly in 3Shape or ExoCAD? No big deal. I'll bring in my OBJ, drop it into Mesh Mixer. This one's on my remote computer. You can see here why I don't like to even work in OBJ that much. Uh, and then here, bring in my lower jaw scan and click Append. And it should be at the correct orientation. Yeah, it is. And then bring in my um, upper jaw scan, which will be my wax rim. Click Append. And then there you go. So... And that's in a nutshell uh, how to go ahead and take a Denture 360 reline scan and kind of do it in a uh, creative uh, method. Um, and what I'll do at this point is I'll, oh, shoot, that's the F5, not the Shift F5. Like, here we go. <laughs> I'll go ahead and take some additional questions. Uh, but like I said, here's my contact information. Like I said, I'm, I'm always a student. Uh, if you know a better way to do this, reach out to me and say, hey, Mike, you Numbskull, I know you're doing it this way, but it's a little bit easier and faster doing it this way. That's how we learn together. Uh, when we learn together, we kind of grow together. It's much, much better. And, you know, the, the DDC team, you know, Jeff, Sander, you guys are doing incredible things with this group. Um, and it's really a wonderful collaborative. And um, I sincerely hope that, you know, everybody who's tuned in here today kind of picked away maybe one or two little tiny tricks or tips or things that might be effective for either your clinical practice or your laboratory. So at this point, I'll, I'll take some additional questions, Sainer. Uh Yes. Um, we, well, so we just have a comment uh, from someone say, uh, if you, why well, you don't do it in Medit uh, and flip it there. Yeah, I, I also alluded to that earlier. When it comes to intraoral scanning, I like really boring and really predictable. In Medit, you can use the impression scan mode, which will do an automatic flip for you if you want. 
Um, the only challenge with that is, is, is that it sometimes will give the a, a weird effect for using that wax rim in that centric record. So yeah, in your medit, one way to do it is, is, is what you can do is, is, is you can go ahead and duplicate your scan and do one as a PBS impression and vice versa. I don't know. I just find it so much easier just to go ahead and say, here's your 360 scam, here's your mandible, boom, 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 super simple, super easy, and then your technician can take over from there. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have anything else. Uh, no, no more questions. Uh, yeah, everybody's, you know, uh, saying thank you. And, um, and yeah, thank you, Dr. Shader, uh, for sharing your knowledge. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in to DDC Study Group Technical Demo. Any last words for, for, for you? Uh, well, uh, thank you for the opportunity, Sander. Uh, thanks, Jeff, as well. Um, and I sincerely hope that everybody's staying well and staying safe during this kind of crazy times. Uh, I know we're shut down. Uh, it's affecting all of us. Uh, but let's keep learning uh, because this will pass. And when it does, we'll all have a little bit more knowledge that will help us uh, in our post-COVID world. So I wish everybody well. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Scherer. And if I miss any questions, feel free to reach out to me and Dr. Scherer. And we will do our best to answer them. Uh, we just want to thank our sponsor, ShareSide Lab Solutions, for supporting dental education. Uh, please tune in tomorrow for back-to-back -back events. Um, kick off um, with uh, planification, uh, the implants, uh, planification, uh, implant planification with exoplan. With, uh, it's going to be in Spanish by Dr. Marcelo perez Bobas en morfología dental para la aplicación digital en español, en Spanish, also uh, by Dr. Graciela Manchuca. So, uh, you can follow us by signing up on our website or through Facebook and Instagram. See you next week, until uh, tomorrow. Until then, uh, stay safe, people.